Hey, how's it going? So today we're gonna work on something that I've been talking about for a while in regards to adding accessories to my chair. I've had this 2021 F3 now for, well, over two years, and I haven't hardly done any customizations to it. But because Portland, today we're gonna to be installing cameras on this chair in the form of a, like a motorcycle DVR dash cam setup. This particular setup has two of these very small little weather resistant like bullet cameras and there's a little sticker on here that says no pressure washing but i think we can get two of these on this chair one facing backwards and one facing forwards and then we should be able to mount the little control box that it has it's pretty small mount that somewhere underneath the chair now this system does claim to record audio i can't find any microphones on the camera so i'm assuming it's on this thing here this is the less expensive version at around a hundred bucks and the main module is not water resistant. So I'm assuming the microphone's on here. But to those of you that live in large metropolitan areas, you'll probably realize that, well, sometimes simply using a power wheelchair or a mobility device kind of makes you not a target, but sort of you get picked on a lot more than is necessary. And especially around Portland. I've been putting this off for a while simply because this system is like a hundred bucks and I didn't feel like spending that, but I had a weird chain of events happen at the grocery store the other night. And while having the cameras wouldn't have prevented anything from happening, it sure would be cool to be able to actually look at the footage and review it later and have a laugh about it. I think that's kind of the main thing is a lot of us end up in these really strange situations that are kind of unbelievable sometimes. And in the past, I've always had a camera at least on the back of my chair, but since I got this new one, I've just been busy with existing and haven't gotten a chance to do anything. So we're gonna figure out how we can mount this on the chair. It's, uh, it comes with a power converter to go from like nine to 32 volts down to like five volt USB, but it also comes with this little testing cable that is a straight USB plug. So I think we're just gonna bypass the whole power converter and connect it up that way. Also, last night when I was thinking about making this video, I realized I didn't have a power converter. So I ordered this and Amazon delivered it six hours later. This is a little multi-voltage input USB output thing, also designed for motorcycles. So anyways, I've looked around the chair a little bit to try and get a rough idea of where to mount these cameras. So. I'm gonna get set up here, I'm gonna grab another chair to hop into, and we're gonna see how hard it is to mount this thing to the chair and test it out. By the way, Wheelchair Ghost has made a couple of videos briefly mentioning this and also showing the video footage from these cameras. So I'm gonna put links to his channel and those videos down below. I'd been eyeballing this thing on Amazon for, gosh, at least over a year now, I think. And after seeing that he bought it and installed it on his chair and it works well, that was all I needed. And then the little push from uh, things happening at the grocery store the other night. Anyways, I'll, I'll talk about that later. But let me get set up here and let's see how hard it is to install this on the chair. All right, let's have a look-see here at what comes in the box with this thing. This here is our main control module and it's not too huge. It's got a little slot here on the side so you can stick a micro SD card in there. And we have a bunch of these I forget what these are called. They're sort of a weather pack connector, but not really. These are seen a lot on the imported e-scooters that people use. Basically, there's pins inside and they're keyed and color coded. And when you push them together, they they kind of click into place. Now, I take that back. These ones are not weather resistant at all. But we've got that. Then we've got this power converter, which we're not gonna be using. One of the cameras, cable. Uh, we've got a little remote control. This, I I need to test it and see. In the manual, supposedly pressing these would start an emergency recording, but it also didn't really say if it was a photo or a video, and there's pictures of cameras on it. There's a couple indicator lights too, so the manual's not written in a way that's really easy to understand, so we're gonna have to test that. And we've got some sort of weird 
mounting apparatus here. Uh, hmm, some sort of screw mount, glue. Oh, I see, this is supposed to like screw onto here for some reason. Well, they have another version of this that has a screen on there, so I'd imagine that this is probably for that setup, but we don't need a screen on this one. It uses a Wi-Fi connection with your phone so you can view the videos. And it looks like we get a few zip ties. Now, the field of view on this thing is, I don't know, it, it varies depending on where you look. The Amazon listing said one thing, and then the paperwork said another, and then a bunch of reviews said something different. So let's get both of these cameras out of here, and we're gonna actually hook this thing up here on the desk and see how wide the camera angle actually is. And I think that's gonna be fairly important also to figure out the best spot to mount these things in. So, I don't think we need these extension cables, or do we? Uh, we'll hook them up anyways. I don't know if there's a, a pinout change between one end and the other, so we're gonna connect the yellows together. Those would be the cameras. Uh, there's some little tiny, almost invisible arrows on there to tell you how to line those up. And we'll go ahead and connect the remote as well. Supposedly this thing is set up so that as soon as you put power to it, it'll start recording automatically. And there's a bunch of configurable settings and whatnot. Let me grab a battery bank. Okay, we've got a little battery bank and a random Android phone that we're gonna use for the app. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug this in and ooh, it made noise and we have some red lights here. We don't have an SD card in there currently, so let me go ahead and download the app for this thing. Visito, driver's security guard. Uh, Wi-Fi camera, it looks like. Sure, we'll install your Chinese app. Okay, let's see if it looks the same as the image on here. Yeah, sure, you can have my cookies. Yeah, that's the one. All right, let's connect to this thing's Wi-Fi, which is Moto DV. And the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, enter recorder, connecting to camera. Oh, we have images. Well, at least, at least one. Let's see, it's upside down. Oh yeah, so that is pretty wide angle. I'm. I'm holding the camera about 12 inches from my face, and you can see the field of view there. So, yeah, cool. That'll do. Uh, how do we switch to the other camera? There we go. There's the other camera. And it appears as though right side up is with the screws facing the sky. So that's kind of handy. I'm assuming we can probably flip that in the settings. Uh, sound record, voice guide, uh, oh yeah, we'll do imperial units because something. Uh, hmm, not seeing an option to flip the video over. But that's fine, I think we're gonna wind up mounting these in this orientation anyways. All right, cool, so we know it works. Oh, let's uh, press the button, see what happens. Oh, I guess we don't have any SD cards in there. Uh, uh, we'll worry about that later. I'm gonna hop out of my chair and see if we can figure out a way to mount this thing. By the way, you're going to hear a faint smoke detector beeping like its batteries are dead all throughout this video. It's in a surrounding unit. It's been going on for a few weeks. I've left notes on their door, but anyways, enjoy. Okay, here's the back of my 2021 F3, and a bit dusty as per usual. In my preliminary testing though, I was thinking that I could potentially mount one of the cameras right here. That's kind of tucked out of the way and it's not super obvious. I wasn't sure how wide angle it would be, so I don't know if this is gonna be an issue. So let me hold this up here. There we go, we're gonna mount it about like that. And as you see there on the camera, I think 
That should be a pretty good field of view. And this, the side of this adjustment here is just barely visible, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that should work nicely. I'm trying to hold this, there we go. Yeah, I think that'll be a good spot for that. Cool. Come to think of it, I don't believe I've ever removed this cover on this chair. So it'll be interesting to see what's inside here. This being the slightly newer version, you pull these four screws out as opposed to the ones that are in the middle. I've actually got some information on identifying which version of Permobile armrests and backrest cover that you have on your chair. How did I start that sentence? Anyways, if you go to the Broken Wheelchairs website, there's a link down below. I have an article with some photos on how to identify which version of Permobile chair you have and how to remove this cover on the back because they are significantly different depending on how old the chair is. And that also has to do with widening these armrests and all that. But there's photos on the website, links down below. You can find that article. Yeah, I'll link directly to it. Okay, let's see what is going on in here. Now, down here, this is gonna be like it was previously. There's some little tabs that kind of hold this in place. Uh, sometimes you can kind of, there's a flat blade. You can get a flat blade in here to kind of release those. There we go. So this thing can pivot down. So my positioning belt is in the way. There we go. And it appears as though we do not have much room in here at all. Um, yeah, so this metal piece goes right inside here with no clearance. So I think we're gonna have to mount the control unit underneath the seat. And you have to be really careful with this. These, these little plastic things will break very easily on these. I was trying to figure out the best way to power this. I think what I'm going to do is use the RNET bus. I've got a few cables over here with the ends cut off and we have two extra ports here. So I think I'm gonna make up one of those cables and then we can pull power off of here. I think we have enough room on this side back here under the chair to mount some of that stuff. As far as getting the camera attached, I was thinking I might use a couple of really small tech screws to hold this on here. But for today, I might just use the included little mounting foam things that they have and we'll run the wires down through there. Well, in the interest of not getting back up off the floor as many times as possible, let's take a look underneath the seat pan and see, foot's in the way, and see if down here is gonna be a spot that'll work for us. So let's run our seat lift up here. And then we'll stick our eyeballs under here and see if this will mount. I think we should be good. There's no actuators on this side. We're also gonna need to mount this power converter down there too. This is basically just a, an SAE, like what I call battery tender cable. And it goes to this little USB thing that has one port. And according to all the documentation and reviews, these things have almost zero quiescent power draw when they're not being used. Oh, the sticker's on there crooked. Actually, we'll just... Uh, We'll just get rid of that. Let's move this light down here so we can see what's going on. Oh yeah, I've got these RGB light strips down here. But yeah, we've got uh, we've got plenty of room right here to mount stuff. Yeah, so mount this down here somewhere, and then our power converter. Yeah, I think that should all fit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. Oh, <laughs> it looks like our light strips are actually starting to come off of here. Funny I mentioned light strips. I've actually got another thing I'm gonna show you here. We probably won't install it on the chair today, but I have a different light kit that are what they call the truck rock lights with four big pods and high power RGB, well, RGBW LEDs. I think we might swap over from using this stuff because this is really hard to attach. But anyways, focusing on the task at hand, I'm gonna play with this a little bit and then I will come back once I figure out how to mount it. Ideally, some sort of like actual bracketry or zip ties would be the best. I don't have any of my 3M mounting tape with me, but as you can see, even using that stuff and under the weight 
of this RGB light strip has come loose. So last thing we want is things dangling underneath here. All right, I'm going to investigate this, figure out how to mount it, and then I'll be back. I went ahead and pulled my, my old RGB strip out from underneath the chair. That was kind of a, not a very good installation. As you can see, there's a bunch of the mounting tape and stuff, and that's all come off of there. But I've used that for a bunch of different projects over the years, and I have a much better solution for this chair now. But we've got the main box mounted right here upside down, and we have access to the little hatch on the back here. There you can see it right there. That's where our micro SD card is gonna go. Our wires are hanging down. And what I did was I used some of the 3M tape that it came with to mount it up to the bottom of the seat pan. Then I pulled a zip tie around the entire thing here on the back. So that's not going anywhere. This is just kind of a quick and dirty installation. I want this thing to be installed on here for something I'm gonna be doing in the next couple of days. So yeah, I think that's gonna work well. Also, removing these, these were powered off of the Permobile USB uh, phone charger that comes on the chair. And the handy thing with that, at least in this application, that USB port is only active when the chair is on. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and pull power for this DVR thing directly from the onboard phone charger. That's going to eliminate the need for this. Later on, I'm gonna go back around and install a proper power distribution box on this chair kind of like I did on my 2017 F3. I had a 24 to 12 volt converter that mounted back here. It was designed for like a ventilator, but I think I'm probably gonna be installing some sort of power box on the back of the chair here at some point. But for right now, this'll work and we won't need to use this thing. Now that I have a chair that actually fits me properly and the cushion holds my hips in place and the wide backrest keeps me from sliding around, I haven't used this thing once. I used to always wear my positioning belt in chairs, but I always had chairs that didn't fit me very well. So I think I'm gonna take these off today because they're just kind of in the way and they're back here collecting dust and everything. So anyways, I'm gonna continue on here. Gonna do some of the wiring and figure out how to wrap some of these cables and I'll be back. By the way, these positioning belts come off of here super easily. Let me show you. There's a little cover here. You don't wanna jam something in and pry up what you wanna do is jam this in and pry this bottom part out. So I'm gonna stick this screwdriver under here and then I'm going to push it the opposite direction of what you might think and that releases the little clips. And then this is a 10 millimeter nylock. Just loosen that a little bit. Pull your back cap off. This thing slides right out. Just has a little hex nut in there that holds it in place. And then we can put this back in. Man, the problem with where I live is just so dusty. It's impossible to keep this thing clean. I mean, look inside this, it's nasty. I just don't know what to do about it, but eh, whatever. I've decided to change things up a little bit. Originally, I wanted to mount the camera right down here. So it would kind of point up at a decent angle when this covers on the back of the chair. I went ahead and pulled this off the rest of the way. You may notice though, this bracket no longer has a camera in it. Turns out there's this little screw on housing that comes off the front of the camera. And this arrow indicates, well, when this is facing up, that's the direction the camera is looking. So this allows us to put the bracket on here and change the angle of how this camera points. I really wanted to mount this with screws anyways. So then I determined we could just put the bracket right here and the camera is still gonna be out of the way. I don't have a backpack on this chair right now, so subject to change later. But this will allow me to kind of change the angle of this if I need to. And I can drive some little screws through there that will not interfere with anything here. I found these little sort of self-tapping-ish quarter inch screws that are pretty short. These interface nicely with a removable tip screwdriver. So I am going to attempt to screw this on here. Eh. Oh, where did it go? Well, anyways, it'd probably be easier to use a drill to pre-drill this, but I don't have a drill here, so I don't know. I'm gonna try and find this screw and get that mounted up. Fast forward a tiny bit. We have one screw on this bracket. 
I'm not gonna install the second one just yet because this will allow me to change the angle of this if I need to. And I can put that screw in after this is all back together. You can see it sticks through here just a little bit, but all of the mounting and other plates here are further in. This section sticks out further this way, so it's not gonna interfere with anything. Yeah, I think this is gonna work nicely. Um, we haven't figured out what we're doing with the front camera just yet, but one thing at a time. All righty, we have our camera mounted up here. I guess you can't see that. Okay, we've got our camera mounted up here, got the back cover put back on, and our wire for it comes out right here. And this is almost long enough. Actually, it might be the perfect length to reach the controller without using this giant rat's nest of extension cable. That would be ideal, but uh, yeah, our, our wires are right here. This is here. So yeah, something. No way it fits. So it's this tiny wire here, comes down through the loom, pops out here, plugs directly in. All right, cool. No extension cable necessary. I just realized we do have another problem though. This test cable, which is what we're actually gonna be powering this with, has a weird little five pin connector and our permobile USB thing is over here, but our control box is over here. So I think what we're gonna do is move this to the other side. And I think that should take care of our issue. Yeah, we can just put it right here, I think. Yeah, then this will be the perfect length. I would like to avoid cutting any of these wires and modifying them or lengthening them if possible. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. This is coming along nicely. Look, it's a camera. These are also very much easy to move. I think it originally came on one of the stock armrests on the other side. But anyways, there's one screw here in the back. We're just gonna pop this loose. Don't take it out all the way. Pull this guy off and, oh, I think I zip tied the cable. Yeah, I did. Come out of there. I just realized that that wire goes up under the cover and I threaded it down through here. So that means I'm about to pull this back cover off again. Ah, that's annoying. I try to limit the number of times I remove these because all the plastic is not really robust enough to come off of there a whole bunch of times. Robust, robust, robust. You can see the wire goes down through there. Then around here, oh, my hands are shaky. Are we in potato mode? Okay, we turned off potato mode. Uh, wire comes down there and up into here, but yeah, yeah, I gotta take this back apart. Or do I? I just had a brainstorm. Let's see if we can pull this corner of the seat pan off and just squeeze it through there. Uh, do we have enough slack to even, oh yeah, that'll work. So let's slide this off and then Ta-da, that'll do. And then we can pull this over here. I think we can fish this through to the other side. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. And then my leg's out of the way. I've just got this thing in neutral so I can push it around. Rolls fairly easily. And then we can just pull this out and slide this on here. Although now we have this wire dangling out of here. Uh, and I'll figure out how to zip tie it on there. So let's put this back in. Then have this back here as far as it'll go. Gently tighten that. Then our USB should fit right in here. There we go. We'll tuck this behind our little pouch. And there we go. We can connect this, uh, we can connect this directly up to our wires. <laughs> Sweet. I'm gonna need to buy some more zip ties, I just realized. The kit came with a few, but all the ones I have are really tiny. Oh, I probably should have routed this 
with the rest of this. Ah, that's okay, that's what zip ties are for. We can, we can tie them on there. Actually, the tiny ones might be perfect for that. I just wanted to test here real quick to make sure that this camera would work without its extension cable because I plugged it in directly. And it appears as though um, we're good. If we go up here, you should be able to yeah, see me waving the phone around there. And then if we switch to the other one, which is not connected, we just get a blue screen. All right, cool. It's handy to figure this stuff out early on, just in case uh, powering it up without one camera or without the extension cable explodes something. Yeah, I think we're doing good. Oh, and our, uh, our remote is not connected either, which I don't really know if we need that, but yeah, sweet. Before we get too carried away here, I should probably verify that I can access the micro SD card hatch there. Okay, so it's a bit obnoxious, but I can get in there. And I'd use a screwdriver to click it into place. Let's, uh, let's power up the chair here. It is cool that it makes a little chirp noise though when I turn on the chair, just to tell me it's working. Ooh, it talked. It said start recording. Let's set it to one minute clips. And then we'll let it go for a minute and see if we can pull any of the footage off of this thing and see if we have audio or anything like that. Blah, 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 something, something. All right, cool. Audio is not super good, but it seems to be working. <laughs> That'll do. I love how it makes binging noises every time I do something. Okay, um, cool. Well, I guess now we can continue on. I'm gonna clean up some of this wire. Actually, I'm gonna get back in my chair. I'm gonna take a break, get some food and then uh, work on the wiring, and then we'll tackle the front and see how we want to mount that camera. We will see. Okay, now we're looking at the front camera. Rear one's done, I'll show that in a bit. But I was trying to figure out a good spot to put this. When Wheelchair Ghost made his video, he's got another adapter that he put on here and uh, oh, it looks like my, uh, they're not melting, but they've definitely seen some heat. Anyways, he's got another piece of metal that he put on here that extends out. And I was thinking this right here would be an extremely low key place to put this, but there isn't really a way to mount everything. But then I got to looking. If you notice right here, we have a little metal bracket and that is what holds on our ICS switches. This metal is very thin. I think if we loosen these bolts, we can just slip this over that plate and potentially mount it like that. So let's pop these screws loose and see if that'll work. Now the trick is keeping clear of this swing away because as you can see, that moves. And we'll wrap the wire, um, or zoomed way in here, but we'll wrap the wire up and around. Anyways, let's just see if this will work. Oh, <laughs> looky there. I think we might have a wiener. Let's see. Yeah, the cable, the cable clearance is pretty close on that, but I think we might be able to get away with it. Okay, let me get this all straightened up here. And we don't want that to block our mono ports. So kind of got this all straightened up. Let's tighten these back down and see if we have any unintended consequences from this. Okay, the wire is gonna come up and around like this. Oh yeah, so it just touches the swing away, but I think that is going to work. And yeah, with it sandwiched down on this plate, this thing is not moving at all. <laughs> Sweet, okay. <laughs> No tools and no mounting hardware required. That's that's what I'm talking about. Um, let me see about the wire routing and clean this up and then I'll show you what I come up with. Okay, I will show the process of how I routed the wire back here, but it's coming out of the little arm bar cover here. Those little ones that I hate that have the little tiny screws that constantly break, but we're gonna have to pull this back off again so we can run this through and down below. But I'm super happy 
with how that camera mounted to the joystick. And uh, let's see, I need the right size one of these. And uh, it's not gonna interfere with the swing away or moving the joystick at all. Oh, that's funny. I didn't even notice the camera right here. I just finished installing it and I didn't even expect to see it there. That's funny. Nice and stealthy is what we're going for here. You're gonna have about three feet of extra wire here, but we should be able to bundle it up and stash it somewhere out of the way. And what I've been doing is we have the main joystick wire and the ICS seating buttons wire. So what I've been doing is I've got a bunch of these little tiny zip ties, so they're the same size they use here. And I've been going around and clipping off the factory ones and stacking this wire in just like that and replacing it with a new zip tie. So it looks pretty much stock and there's just this little tiny third wire here. There you can see it. And it doesn't really look like much. Oh, the light just died. The thing said it still had an hour of runtime left. Hmm. No, I guess the battery gauge isn't always super accurate on this. Oh, and by the way, the bracket that this camera is mounted on, uh, it's all dark now, but since it's just a little metal bracket, I put it on here, pulled up the camera view on my phone, and I was able to just bend it a little bit. So about four feet behind me, you can see the ground and all the way up to the ceiling. If someone's standing within four feet of the back of you, you're only going to see maybe up to mid chest height, but... Uh, Better than nothing. I have absolutely no idea what the angle on the front camera is yet, but we're gonna look at that in a few minutes. I think we might be dangerously close to done. I love it when you're just working on a project and working and working, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna get some more coffee and recharge this thing. We have to have light. Okay, we'll just use the light that's built into the camera. So, front one, yeah. Once again, you never know how dirty your chair is until you start getting really close to it. Ugh, need to clean some of this. Anyways, we were able to sandwich this in between the mounting plate for the ICS switch box and the joystick. I pointed that upwards at an angle. And right here, you can just barely start to see the charging port on this thing. Yeah, if you look here, you can just barely see it right there. So that's a pretty good field of view. Then our wire, uh, as you can see, our swing away here still works just fine. I, I wound up pulling the wire around here and running it over the top of the, or underneath the ICS switch box. And we picked up the wiring harness there, replaced all the zip ties coming down. These are out under here, back here. The length of this was a little bit too short. If this was like an inch and a half longer, we would, we would have been able to get this connector up inside this channel. But unfortunately that wasn't possible, so whatever, I think it'll be okay. Comes back here, then it ducks into this stupid cover that I hate so much. And from there it goes out the back, down there, around. Okay, I'm recording this again on a different camera. The other one screwed up. So we've got camera up front, wire comes all the way around, down through here. We've got the wires all tied down. Got our USB power supply right here. Got these all tied up nicely. Down here looks like the bottom of a chair, so it's not gonna look pretty no matter what you do, but we got the both the front and rear camera wires hooked here into the factory cable retention. The extra like, I don't know, 20 inches of wire just bundled up right there. Then our DVR thing is right here. Power wire for that comes over, plugs in right there. So once again, it's not gonna look super pretty. And this piece was bent when I got my chair brand new. I don't know what happened there, but I don't know, it's just a rubber thing. It kind of bugs me. Maybe I should see if I can get a new one. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked easily. We're gonna call this good for today. It works. I've got, uh, oh, I'm gonna hop in the chair and record a couple of clips just driving around here in the warehouse. Once again, the audio, this is a zipper. Anyways, once again, the audio is pretty much unusable simply because the microphone is inside this box and it's tucked down on top of the chair. So 
all you're going to hear is permobile sounds and rattling and stuff. I'll see if I can fix that later on, but yeah, this is, uh, this is going to work nicely. Okay, I'm using the voice recorder on my phone so that we can actually hear what I'm saying while you're looking at this video. So I'm gonna turn on my chair and you'll hear this thing beep. Recording. Now in theory, you should be seeing video from the front camera. Probably see my knee right here. So let's go ahead and go forward here. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, here's what the audio sounds like directly off the recorder. Yeah, it's not the best thing in the world. Now, I have noticed that the lighting in here seems to interfere with the frame rate on these cameras just a little bit. But here's the rear camera, so you can see that. Just a lot of stuff in here. Uh, yeah, so anyways, it's dark outside right now, so I can't record anything out there. But anyways, there you go. Uh, I'll leave a link to Wheelchair Ghost's video down below. He's got a lot more footage available from these cameras. Anyone that knows me historically, I don't usually put up with my chair being filthy. And I know I keep saying this, but I've just had to stop caring about it because I'll clean this thing, which I did yesterday, and it already looks horrible again. Uh, okay, I am extremely tired. I'm gonna get a couple of clips recorded with these cameras. I've got the video mostly edited up here. And yeah. Oh, let me show you those RGB lights I was talking about, the rock lights. Uh, I actually mentioned these on a live stream, maybe another video, I can't remember. But I got three of these sets and they come with four of these little RGBW pods. They have some nice metal heat sinking on the back, a little protective cover on there. So there's four of these total. There's a little controller box. This thing has a Bluetooth app that links to your phone, but also it comes with one of these little generic Chinesium type remotes that just says A, B, C, and D. So you can turn it on and off with this, or you can cycle through the colors. There is another traditional RGB style remote that it does not come with, but you can buy those and then directly select the different colors. So the idea with these is we're gonna put them on the bottom of our soccer chairs. That way when we're playing against another team, we, you know, they have different colors. There's like, you know, black or dark blue or green or yellow or whatever. But we could have these colors illuminating the floor underneath us to make it really easy to tell which team we're on. That's not a regulation thing, but just, while we're practicing and stuff. Anyways, all right, SD card filled up. Apparently the GoPro turned itself on in my bag and recorded for 30 minutes until it overheated and filled the SD card. Anyways, found these things on Amazon. They were like 15 some odd dollars with a 20% off coupon. However the math works, they were like $12, each one for the set. A friend bought one, he tried it out, said it worked great. So then I bought my own to take a look at it. They were pretty awesome, went back to Amazon. They were still 12 some odd dollars, so I figured I would buy two more because I got the feeling that the price was probably gonna go up. And sure enough, it did. They are now just under, or just over $30 each, which these things are fine, but I would probably get something different if I was paying that much. Anyways, I'm probably gonna put one set of these on the F3 that I'm sitting in here. And that is a big box of hardware. Not right now though, but that's why we removed, ugh, it was crunchy. But that's why we removed the RGB strips that were under here, because this is gonna be, <sighs> if I mention that I'm tired. Um, all right, I'm gonna dump this footage on the computer and we're gonna call that good. Hopefully you enjoyed and um, yeah, something. <laughs>